So now let's talk about the mesodermal structures and the other structures that develops from the brachial arches. Keep in mind that we're still talking about the brachial arch or, or the derivatives of the brachial arch, which is only this area. Structures which comes from the cleft or the pouch does not give the same structures as the brachial arch. So they are all different. Different structures come from the arch, di different structures come from the pouch, and different structures come from the cleft. Keep that in mind. So the structures that come from brachial arch 1, the brachial arch 1 are mag muscles of mastication, maxilla, mandible, malleus, and incus. See, this is where the magic of the mnemonic really plays a big part. The M for maxillary artery, or make some important stuff. M for maxillary artery. M for muscles of mastication. M for muscles of mastication. M for maxilla. M for malleus. M for mandible. And incus, you just have to kind of remember it. That doesn't really fall under the M mnemonic. And also, so all these structures, the maxilla, malleus, mandible, these derive from the Meckel's cartilage. And these cartilages are also supplied by the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. And some of the muscles of mastication that also rhymes with M are masseter, And then there is the medial pterygoid. There is mylohyoid. Also rhymes with M. These are the muscles of mastication from brachial arch 1. There are other ones which does not rhyme with M. And you kind of have to remember it like some structures. And these include... Anterior belly of digastric, of digastric, okay. And then there are the T's, which include tensor tympani, tensor tympani, and then there is the tensor. Eli Palatini. And last but not the least, anterior two thirds of tongue is also supplied by the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. So I just want to make it clear that. The muscles of mastication are, I'm writing them here, masseter, medial pterichoid, uh, mylohyoid, anterior belly of digastric, tensor tympani, tensor villa palatini, anterior two-thirds of the tongue, the innervation is by trigeminal nerve. Obviously, um, that has nothing to do with mu the muscles of mastication. So moving on to brachial arch 2, see how we thought the second one has to do with S, make some important stuff. S for stapedial artery. I've put down S for smile. Well, actually, for brachial arch 2, the mesodermal structs are muscles of facial expression, but you cannot really write that down and rhyme with the S's. So when you, when you smile, you use the muscles of the face to smile. So that's why I put smile here for mesodermal, mesodermal structures. The other mesodermal structure that comes from the brachial arch 2 is stapedius, which is in the inner ear. And other cartilages are stapes and styloid. Notice how they're all, they all have S's against smile or muscles of facial expression, stapedial artery, stapes, stapedius, stapes, and 
styloid. Another S that I can add here is stylohyoid. So I'm just going to add it right here. So stylohyoid. Stylohyoid can be both a muscle, mesoderm giving uh, a structure, a muscular structure, a stylohyoid muscle, and a stylohyoid ligament. Okay, these are mostly ligaments. So you will notice now that I have kind of left out, left out hyoid from the picture. So let's talk about hyoid. Let me make some space here. So whenever we're talking about hyoid, there is two types of hyoids. There is the upper body lesser horn and the lower body greater horn. You must be thinking right now that how am I ever going to make it fit in my little box. It must have to be one of those things that I just have to remember and that's where you're wrong. So see, upper body lesser horn is actually coming from brachial arch 2. Okay, So let's say we write a 2 here. Okay? So a 2, if you write it carefully and you make a shape like this. Okay, because this is like the first semicircle of the two. And now, what does this look like? It almost looks like an upper body action, right? It looks like a breast. So let's say we draw a horn here. Okay. So we can say that the hyoid lesser horn is in the upper body which comes from brachial arch 2. 2 has an upper body action with lesser horn. Then what about 3? If 2 is upper body lesser horn, 3 uh, lower body greater horn, horn must be 3. Right? 2 is upper body lesser horn, 3 is lower body greater horn. How can you remember that? See, 3 has two semicircles, and when you kind of rotate the 3, you get a lower body action, right? So that will remind you that this is lower body and greater horn. So now I added the upper body lesser horn in part of the brachial arch 2, and the lower body greater horn part of the brachial arch 3. So now we have the cartilage derivative of brachial arch 3. Well, what about muscle? What kind of muscle is going to be derived from brachial arch 3? And the muscle is going to be stylopharyngeus. Stylopharyngeus. Now, how do I remember stylopharyngeus? Well, brachial arch 3, what nerve innervates brachial arch 3? Hmm, great nerve 9. Or glossopharyngeal, right? Glossopharyngeal. So it rhymes with the stylopharyngeus part of the glossopharyngeal. So that's why from brachial arch 3, the muscle derived from the mesoderm, stylopharyngeus, is going to be supplied by cranial nerve 9 which is derived from brachial arch 3. So let's do the rest of the ones, 4 and 6. So for 4, we have cricothyroid for muscle and thyroid cartilage for other structure. See, how do we remember this? Well, brachial arch 4 has pretty important structures. For example, arch of aorta. Hmm. Well, what other important structures 
come with brachial arch 4 which also had, has arch of aorta something as important as thyroid so thyroid cartilage is here and cricothyroid so it takes all these important stuff and what about 6 well 4 comes first so it will take the more important stuff and leave the rest for brachial arch 6 so what does 6 has? larynx except cricothyroid why? well cricothyroid is already developed from brachial arch 4 and other cartilages also do develop from brachial arch 6. Now brachial arch 4 also supplies some pharyngeal constrictors. Okay. So pharyngeal constrictors. Along with the levator villi palatini. Now this is supplies, this is derived from brachial arch 4. Okay, remember how I mentioned at the very beginning how brachial arch 4 and 6 are shared and they share the cranial nerve 10? Hmm, that is quite important. But you do have to remember that even though this, that, that, that is, the, the cranial nerve is shared, Brachial arch 4 is supplied by superior laryngeal branch, where brachial arch 6 is supplied by recurrent laryngeal branch. So 4 is supplied by superior laryngeal, and 6 is supplied by recurrent laryngeal. See how it plays beautiful, beautifully with the anatomy of the whole thing because cricothyroid is not supplied by the recurrent laryngeal. In fact, it is supplied by the superior laryngeal which also innervates brachial arch 4. Now, notice how I just talked about the brachial arch. There is the brachial pouch and the brachial cleft which I will uh, talk about in the succeeding um, embryology videos.